Hey everybody. Um, it has been, I don't even know how long since I have done a live stream. I just, I don't remember how, I have no clue how long it's been since I did a live stream, but that's okay. I am here. Um, I was um, doing some reflecting this morning and actually I was listening to a podcast and something that um, they, the person was sharing, the um, show host was sharing, got me reflecting on a principle that I um, ascribe to. And I think that I haven't been implementing in my own life as well as I should be, especially lately. And um, I wanted to pop in and just kind of share with you some thoughts. I jotted down some things that, um, so hopefully I'll be able to actually make some sense um, as I'm sharing today. I want to, as you all are coming in, because I didn't announce that I was going to go live, so I know that you guys had no idea that I was going to be doing it, um, but hopefully, um, Hopefully a few of you all will be able to pop in and actually join me live. Um, if not, let me know. Hit me in the comments and let me know that you're watching the replay. Just hit that hashtag, um, type in hashtag replay. Um, so as you can see from the post description or video description, I'm going to be talking to you today about stop doing the most. Um, because I know I am guilty of being that person. Um, and I'm sure that there, um, if you are not that person in your circle, then uh, you definitely know someone who is like that, who is always doing the most. And what I mean by doing the most, I'm not saying like that they're being extra. What I mean is that they are doing all the things. They are doing everything. They have super long to-do lists. Um, They've got all kinds of different things going on in their life. They've got all kinds of different things going on in their business. They're doing all the things. And um, I'm sure you've probably heard the saying where they say um, less is more, right? We've probably all heard that before. And um, you may not even really have a great, you know, like while you get, get the concept, you may not really have a full graphs on the meaning behind that. And there's actually a lot of truth to that statement. Um, unfortunately, like I said, myself included, um, we get caught up in adding all the things onto our schedules, all the things into our to-do list, all the things into our closets, um, to the point where they're just kind of overflowing. And um, we're doing that in an effort to get bigger and better results because we think if I just do this one more thing in my business, then it's going to be the thing that gets me, um, drives the income, drives the revenue that I want, dri um, will allow me to hit my goals, will allow me to go full time in my business, will allow me to um, book another speaking engagement, will allow me to bring on another client. And so we think that by adding this one more thing, it's like, oh, we learned something new or like, oh, I need to add this one more thing or this one more element um, in order for me to be successful in my life or in my business. And um, while um, most of us are doing that or, or get in that mindset or in that thinking of doing all the things, all the things will allow me to make more money or to have more in my life, um, what what happens is we end up spreading ourselves too thin. And when we divide ourselves up so much, when we divide our efforts and our energies up so much, what happens is we don't end up being effective, truly effective in anything because we're just being divided too much. And... Um, so I want to share with you a kind of a principle today on how you can actually 
get the results that you are desiring in your life and in your business by doing less. Now, I can just about hear the eyes rolling in the back of your head as I say that, like, how in the world am I going to get better results um, by doing less? And I'm glad that you asked me because I'm going to share with you because, you know, they say the proof is in the pudding, in the pudding. And so I'm going to be sharing you, sharing with you the proof, the pudding. I'm going to share with you the pudding that um, proves out um, this concept of doing less, but getting more. Um, but before I get into what the actual principle or the ap ap actual method is to doing less and getting more, I want to share with you kind of I want to do a little brief, a tiny history lesson. Um, there is an Italian philosopher and economist, and I'm going to read his name because it's long, um, Vilfredo, Wilfredo Frederico Damasco Pareto. Um, he's Italian, so Italians like to have those super long 500 million different names. But anyway, um, the philosopher and economist Pareto noticed this really interesting um, phenomenon in his garden. He noticed that um, of the pea plants that he had in his garden, 20% of the plants actually produced 80% of the healthiest pea pods um, from his um, harvest. Now, this discovery led him to look deeper into the distribution, um, look, I should say, look into the distribution of wealth. And what Pareto discovered is that in Italy, at the time that he was doing this research, in Italy, 80% um, of the land was owned by 20% of the people. Um, and then he took the research even further and started looking across various industries, business industries at production rates. And what he found within, no matter what industry he um, looked at with regard to production rates, he found that the same principle held to, true, that the result was the same. That, um, And that led him to draw this conclusion that 80% of our results come from just 20% of our actions. This um, this concept or this principle is known as the Pareto principle, or also more commonly, or you may be more familiar with this term, which is the 80-20 rule. Now, I talk a lot about the 80-20 rule when it comes to productivity. Um, and this is why, um, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because um, we can deduce from this principle that he came up with or this 80 um, this 80 20 rule that 80 percent of what we end up putting on our schedule is or maybe even on our, our to-do list may not necessarily be worth the time and effort that we're putting into it um, but if we could at the same time determine which actions, which task, which things are the ones that actually generate the majority of our positive results or the results that we're looking for, then what we could do is shift our focus, shift our attention to doubling down on those tasks, on those actions, on those activities, so that we can see an exponential growth in our results. So it's not so much that you need more time to do all the things. What you need is to devote more of your time to doing those that 20% of the things that actually yield you 80% of your results. So for example, let's say that um, you're looking at your business and you're realizing that 80% um, of your revenue comes from just a couple products, maybe one or two products that you have in your product line. So why not then double down on your marketing of those one or two courses 
so that you can then grow exponentially your revenue. So then your revenue can go through the roof because you're putting the majority of your um, resources, your time, energy, your money, and your attention, you're putting it into those few things that generate the most amount of revenue in your business. Um, so, you know, it can go the same way for even personal things. So I don't know about you, but if you, um, we tend to, I have a ton of shoes. I don't know how many pairs, um, but I do have quite a few pairs of shoes, but I find myself wearing the same shoes the majority of the time. So maybe then I don't need to have all those other shoes and I can actually have my closet be made up of the things that are really most important or that are most valuable to me and not have my closet all cluttered up that where it frustrates me where I can't find shoes I can't find what I'm looking for because ladies let's let's face it a lot of times we go in our closets and um, we have so much in there we don't even know what we can't even find what we're looking for or we have so much we don't we forgot that we even had XYZ shirt or dress or pants or whatever because they are buried in there what if we could pare down our closets to the things that we wear the most where the where the most often that break it down to those tw that 20% then what we have is the ability to see more clearly what we have and grab the things that we that we enjoy the most to put on and you know you might be thinking like well why would you even like how did you get from your schedule and marketing a product to my closet is because you know I'm one of the things that I'm all about is productivity if you been in this group any length of time, you know, I talk about productivity all the time. And one of the things that can take up a lot of our time, maybe not as much now if you're still um, working remotely like I am, but one of the things that took a lot of time in the morning was trying to figure out what the heck I was going to wear, what I'm going to put on. And I'm sure you probably have had that struggle at some point um, as well, if not on a regular basis. Well, if you have your closet pared down to the things that you wear the most and um, that you enjoy the wearing the most, then it's much easier because you can see really clearly, you can just grab something out and you know that whatever you grab out, it's something you like and you're going to look good in, right? And it's all about, it's that saving time. So then you don't end up with a pile of clothes on your bed and 30 minutes of your day wasted trying to figure out, trying on different outfits and trying to figure out what you want to wear, right? So um, and my point in even bringing um, my point in bringing that up is that the 80/20 rule can apply to any aspect of your life, right? Any aspect of your life can be impacted or affected by um, by the 80/20 rule. Sorry, I got distracted because um, the mailman was knocking on my door. But um, anyway, um, so I want to encourage you to spend more time. First of all, take the time to really um, review your business um, and think about, identify the thing, the activities or the actions that yield the most results in your business. So if it's um, a certain number of, you know, if it's revenue that you're, you know, revenue that you're after, look, take a look and see what your, what products and services um, you sell the most, you know, you sell the most often or generate the most revenue in your business. Um, if it is that you're, um, you have a client base, your service base, um, service based business, and you have uh, a client base that you're working with, take a look and see which of your clients bring in the most revenue. What are those return customers? Um, or maybe even take a look at the demographics, take a look at uh, the, the whole population of your clients and take a look and see what demographic the um, is the majority of your client base, right? So maybe you find out that 80% um, of your revenue comes from just 20% 20, uh, 20 of the demographic. So maybe it's a particular group of, of people. So maybe it's women between the ages of 35 and 40 um, who have kids or something like that, right? So take a look at every, any whatever that 
most important uh, aspect of your business is the, the KPI, right? The key, um, my mind just went completely, completely right, blank. What the P stands for. Oh my gosh. Um, key performance indicators. Okay, there it goes. Woo. Um, <laughs> um, what are the KPIs in your business? What are those key performance indicators? So take a look at those and see where do you get the majority of your results from. And I guarantee you that it's going to be around that 20% mark. It might be a little bit more. It might be a little bit less. But um, the truth of the matter is the majority of your results from whatever that key performance indicator is, is going to come from just around 20% of the actions or activities or tasks that are associated with those KPIs. So, um, so go through, review that, identify what those tasks are, and then spend more time doing those things. Devote more of your time, more of your day to doing those things so that you can exponentially grow in that area or that aspect of your business or of your life. So that's my word of encouragement for you today. Stop doing the most. Implement the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle into your life and into your business and you will see exponential growth, exponential increase in the results that you're getting by focusing on that 20% that is getting you that 80% of your results. Um, that is all for today. Um, I hope that you found this to be helpful. And I'd love to hear, let me know how you, um, how you plan to implement the 80-20 rule in your business. What um, and I would I would definitely recommend starting with just one um, KPI. Find one KPI um, within your business and look and see where, what that 20% is that yields your 80% of your results, and then um, double down on that tw the 20% of actions or activities tasks that drive that, and see what the result ends up being. So let me know in the comments what that KPI is that you're going to focus on identifying the 20% and then um, come back and let me know what the result is. That's all for now. I will see you all next time. Um, oh, it's been so long since I've done a live. I forgot to even say this. Don't forget, always remember that you got this and God has you. I love you all and I appreciate you all and I will see you next time.